In this video, we're going to take a look at how to draw with charcoal. Specifically, we're going to complete a drawing of a skull. We'll begin by drawing loose contours or outlines. Then we'll spread powdered charcoal over the surface, establishing a base tone. We'll work that into the surface. Then we'll erase out a few of the highlights and draw them in with white charcoal. Then lastly, we'll darken the shadows with black charcoal. For this demonstration, I'm working on Canson Mitant's paper, which is a pastel paper. There are two sides to the paper, logically, but one side has a heavier tooth or texture associated with it. We're working on the smoother side of the paper. There's still a texture associated with this side, but it's less severe. We'll begin by drawing the contours or the outlines using a charcoal pencil. We'll draw these lines very loosely and lightly. It's very important that you don't put too much pressure on yourself here in the early stages to get all of the lines perfect. You almost want to think in your mind that you're finding the correct line. Therefore, you might draw several lines in this early stage. Once we've got the basic contour of the skull established, we can start to establish the locations of the different parts, beginning with the eye sockets. In this case, I drew a line across the brow region. Then I'm going to pull the shapes for the eyes down underneath that brow line. To create the lines, I'm looking at areas of high contrast. High contrast specifically in value. So when you have a dark area right next to a light area, that'll be a good place to put a contour line. I'm trying to let my marks originate from my shoulder or my elbow. In other words, I'm trying not to use too much of my wrist as I make marks. This will lead to sharper and straighter lines and make the drawing a little bit more accurate. Changes and alterations to the original contour line can be made throughout these early stages. Here again, you're trying to find the right shape. Since the skull is overall an angular model, we're going to try to create angular lines as we draw it. Therefore, I'm focusing on trying to create straighter lines opposed to curved lines. With a loose structure defined, we can start to apply the powdered charcoal. Powdered charcoal is pulverized vine charcoal. It is very dusty and it's advised to use some kind of face covering here so you don't accidentally inhale the charcoal bits. We're going to spread it all around the surface using a mop brush. We can also use a paper towel or a chamois to work it into the surface. Some nice brush strokes might develop during this process and you may choose to leave them as part of your drawing. Now we'll start to define some of the darker areas before we move on to the highlights. I'm going to use the charcoal pencil that I used originally just to define the areas of darkest value here. This will help me see the image, even though we can still see it faintly through the powdered charcoal application. Next, I'll use a kneaded eraser to lift areas of powdered charcoal. This will begin the process of establishing the lighter values or the tints within the drawing. A kneaded eraser is great because it can be pulled and moved into different shapes. This will allow you to create the type of marks that you need to for specific areas. The surface we're working on is somewhat of a warmer gray. This will contrast with the cooler grays that will be made by mixing the compressed charcoal, the black compressed charcoal, and the white compressed charcoal that we'll later apply to the surface. Now we'll take a white charcoal pencil and define the highlights further. You can see how the whites that are developed here are different from the whites that were developed by lifting the powdered charcoal with the kneaded eraser. This will create more variety in our grays and lead to a more realistic appearance.
We can also create gradations or slow changes in value using the white charcoal pencil. By varying the amount of pressure that we put on the pencil, we can create a variety of grays and ensure a full range of value in the finished piece. As marks are made, we're careful to consider the cross contours. Cross contour lines may not be visible lines, but they're implied lines that follow the form of the object that you're drawing. Therefore, the marks that you make should follow the cross contours. This will lead to a greater illusion of form in the final drawing. There's a strong bit of light that reaches through the bottom portion of the skull. This is why there's a strong highlight on the bottom portion of the teeth. We can also create the illusion of texture on the surface by the marks that we make with the white charcoal pencil, allowing some of the warm gray to show through. In any drawing or painting that you complete, the light source is incredibly important. After all, we cannot see without light. Therefore, the light is what is going to inform us about the form of the object. It's in this stage of the drawing, adding the highlights, that we're actually drawing the light on the surface. It's the contrast between the dark values and the light values and the gradations of those values that's going to inform the viewer about the light source and ultimately the form of the skull. As we work through the process of developing the values, we're going to allow the viewer to put this information together in their mind to make sense of what they're viewing. In essence, we're creating an illusion. Therefore, you don't have to be too obsessed with all of the details that you may see in your reference. Instead, concentrate on the relationships between the dark and light values. If you get those right, the translation will occur. The light source is very strong, originating from the upper left-hand side. This means the highlights in this region will be stronger as well. We'll put a little bit more pressure on the pencil to create stronger highlights. We'll also add a bit of indication of details. In this case, a small fissure occurs. And here again, we'll create the illusion of texture by creating a variety of different marks in this section. Here again, in this area, we'll closely consider the cross contour lines, making lines that curve around the form of the skull. An additional fissure happens right down the middle of the skull. This causes the right side of the skull to protrude upward a bit, meaning that it will capture more of the light. We'll continue to develop the protruding areas with highlights. In this case, the brow region is addressed. We can continue to work over the areas that we have already applied the white charcoal, making areas lighter where needed. Now we'll use a softer charcoal pencil to make the darks a bit darker. We can also add a few details with the dark charcoal as well. Charcoal, of course, is a powdery material and can be easily smudged on the surface. This can be used to your advantage, of course, when you're drawing, but it also can cause unwanted smudging. To prevent unwanted smudging, place a paper towel or a napkin underneath the palm of your hand as you work. As we continue to add the softer charcoal pencil, 
we can fully develop that range of value. Remember, in the end, we want to have the darkest darks, the lightest light, and all the grays in between. Creating a full range of value will always lead to a more aesthetically pleasing drawing. By adding the darker charcoal, we're in essence making the lights appear lighter, simply because of the contrast between the darks and the lights. Just as highlights are found on areas that protrude, shadows exist in areas that recede. In this case, a couple of sinus cavities exist above the eye sockets, so these areas are darker in value. We'll also use the softer charcoal to develop some of the texture on the side of the skull. Just as we did with the white charcoal, we want to consider the cross contour lines as marks are made. Now to keep our skull from appearing like it's floating, we'll add a bit of cast shadow underneath it. Since the light source is originating from the upper left hand side, this means the shadow will exist on the lower right hand side. Next, I'll use a kneaded eraser and erase out a few marks around the skull. In essence, I'm going to lighten up a bit of those areas, but I'm also going to try to create a bit of textural marks to make the drawing a little bit more interesting. Remember, your eraser is also a mark making tool, so use it as such. A blending stump is used to work the charcoal into the tooth of the paper, resulting in a more uniform appearance. The shadow should be darker closer to the object and slowly transition into the background. Using the blending stump helps us create this illusion. And now the drawing is complete and can be fixed using workable fixative or final fixative. If you enjoyed this video and you're ready to learn more, why not check out four video courses, live instruction, and over 6,000 minutes of art instruction which include ebooks, live lessons, lesson plans, and more. Just click on the button to learn more now.